Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated restricted for anyone listening under the age of 17. Frequent or prolonged examples of adult situations, violence, or coarse language may apply. Tale of the Waking World, written and performed by Cayenne Chris Conroy. Rest Stop, Part 2. Nothing, it's just fog. Yeah, well, I know that, but I wanted to know if we were still actually on the road. That was the whole point of this exercise. Not looking forward to trying to drag this thing out of a ditch with no help. Well, hang on, I'll check. You know, they say a miss is as good as a mile. Oh, so we're a mile from the edge of the road, huh? That's good to know. Wow, this is about the thickest fog I think I've ever seen. You can actually see in this fog, Nero? I commend you on your amazing visual skills. Well, I can see it's fog in the headlights, obviously, but not much further than that can barely see my feet. Well, we can't stay here, then. You'll forget what your feet look like. Oh, that would never happen. How can I forget these? Look, monkey feet. I know, I love your monkey feet. In fact, I'm jealous of your monkey feet. Why? Well, you could, like, you know, type with your feet. Yes, and then I could get toe stank all over the keyboard. Yeah, who? Toe, toe stank. stank. <clears throat> oh, hi, Malcolm. Sorry, you caught us in the middle of an intellectual discussion. Yes, well, I was going to ask if it was the two of you out here, but you gave it away, didn't you? Is there a problem, Malcolm? Possibly. I carry a weather radio with me. It's just something I do for fun. And I've been listening to the forecast for this stretch of the road this evening. There's absolutely no talk anywhere of fog. Nothing at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. Everyone was commenting on how amazingly clear it's supposed to be. Yes, that is a little bit unusual. I should have sensed a change in the weather at some point. And you didn't feel anything? No. But then we are between cities. It's pretty wild country back there. It could have just shifted in from the off-road. Okay. You sensing anything unusual about the fog itself? Nothing out of the ordinary. Good. At least we have that in our favor. I'll go back and tell the driver, then. Good, thank you. That'd be very helpful. Thank you, Malcolm. Not at all. Yeah, we'll see you back on the bus in a second, Malcolm. You know, Nero, I haven't known you that long, but I think I've known you long enough to know that when you said nothing out of the ordinary, there was a big silent implied but on the end of that sentence. Yes, well, I'm not sensing anything out of the ordinary. Or anything ordinary about the fog. I'm just not sensing anything about it. What do you mean? Like it's Look, you know how goblins can sense things that humans can't? Well, I've had training. I can sense things that even goblins can't. Normally, I could tell you whether or not this weather was natural or supernatural or whatever, but I'm just not sensing anything. It's like it's not there. Well, obviously it is. It's what's keeping the bus from going any faster than two miles an hour. I know. I mean, it's whatever this is, it's very unnerving. It's like, you know, like... Like walking into a thick fog bank for someone like me? Pretty much, yeah. Sucks to be human, doesn't it? Yeah, well, welcome to my shoes, lady. <laughs> yes, well, Hanover, I think someone may be doing this deliberately. Like to try to hide an ambush or something? Mm-hmm. It's a warm thought. I'll keep that close to me tonight when I sleep. That's just great. Sorry. If you two are quite done out there, you mind coming back on the bus so I can tell you how we're going to handle this little predicament? Shall we? But of course, Squire, lead the way. Not too quickly, though. I can't see a damn thing. Thanks, both of you. I wasn't looking forward to the idea of sending out a search party. Yeah, well, we got zero visibility out here, so what's the plan? Well, I'm glad you asked. About 15 or so miles up the road, there's a rest oasis, and it just so happens that they have a radio beacon. Hmm, nice. They keep these things on hand just in case of extremely bad weather like, well, this. Oh, that's clever. That it is. We just stay on the road, let the beacon guide us to the rest stop, and then we can refuel, get some rest, get some food, you know, wait till the fog lifts. And how long do you think that will take? Well, staying on the road is the key here. You'll forgive me if I'm not very zippy. Well, I guess I'll go catch up on some reading then. Yeah, I should probably work on a status report for the higher-ups, let them know what's going on. We can email it to them once we get to the Oasis. What are you going to do, Nero? Oh, I think I'll just sit up front here, keep an eye on things, road, weather conditions, passengers. 
You know, I think I've also known you long enough to know that Malcolm puts you off. Uh, what's up with that? Well, remember when he got on? Not really, no. Me neither. Hmm. So, uh, what's your feeling about him? I don't sense anything out of the ordinary. You're just full of warm thoughts tonight, aren't you? Have a nice report. All right. Well, let's blow this fog bank. Well, that took a lot longer than I'd hoped. It would have gone a lot faster if it hadn't been for all those sheep. Yes, I've never seen a whole herd of sheep crossing the road in the fog in the middle of the night without a shepherd around. It was a little eerie. Oh, there was a shepherd there. Didn't you see him? Where? I didn't see one. The big one. The one in the middle. He was dressed as a sheep? Yeah, they do that out here. Mostly for religious reasons, I'm told. What sort of religion makes you dress as a sheep? Yeah, it's a sheep-based religion. Oh. All right. So this is a road oasis, huh? It's quite impressive. Yeah, I used to think these were just sort of crappy tourist trap things. Well, that's what they used to be back in the day. Sort of these crappy truck stop sort of things. Just get yourself some coffee and pancakes or something. They don't have pancakes? They have pancakes. Don't panic, Missy. Ooh, close one. Anyway, these used to be used for defense. There used to be a wall between these two hills right here. Mm. And that would keep people in and out. There was mm-hmm. a door. People would come through, pay a toll. They'd check mm. out their merchandise, make sure they weren't sneaking in anything, you know, dangerous or whatever, fruit, you know, yeah. that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you know, just fell into disrepair and ruin. Someone hit upon a great idea. Why don't we just turn them into rest stops, you hmm. know? In the oh, first building here where the tower is, you'll find, you know, coffee shops, hmm. shopping, that kind of hmm. thing. And then the skyway across leads into hmm. the keep right there. And you'll find your nighttime accommodations. Well, nice. Let's get some coffee. Yes, and there's plenty of cars in the parking lot. At least we'll have company. Yeah, not surprising with the fog this bad. Nobody home? Well, perhaps they've all gone to bed. It is awfully late. The cash register is still on. Hello? Is anyone there? Did they close? These places are open 24 hours, son. Besides, if it was, it would have locked the door. And turned off the lights, and not left uneaten food on the tables. I'm going to go check behind the counter. I'll go check the bathrooms. I'll look at the storage areas. I'm going to stay here and make coffee for all of us. We're probably going to need it. Well, money's still in the till. Hot dogs and things like breakfast burritos and all that kind of warm stuff from the convenience store section, that's all just laid out and ready to be purchased. Nothing unusual about the storage areas or the cleaning stations. Just laid out as if this was a normal night's work. Got something, Nero? I found this woman's jacket in the restroom. There was no identification in it, but it was a set of car keys. It's got a remote on the key ring. I mean, maybe we could use it to find out whose car it is. It might give us some kind of clue. Thought of that already. Look. See? Nothing. Those cars are well within range of this remote. And you may have noticed that your cell phones will be getting absolutely no service whatsoever, and the Wi-Fi system is completely down. Damn, I brought my laptop here for nothing. My portable radio is out, too. I'm not getting any sort of reception at all. Nothing. That doesn't make any sense. We were led here by the radio beacon, weren't we? That we were, and to my knowledge, it was functioning absolutely normally right up until we got off the bus. Means whatever happened here happened just as we arrived, or is being extremely selective. Which only leaves the question of the whereabouts of all the patrons. Well, it looks like they all up and left in the middle of their meals, but there's no disarray or destruction. Which means they probably crossed the skyway into the keep in a really, really orderly fashion. Very calmly. You know, there is one other potential explanation for this. I know, I know, but I'm not about to entertain the possibility that a few dozen people just vanished into thin air until we've checked the keep out. Well, if we're going over to the keep, we'll need an action plan and some decisions made. Yeah, I... Why are you all looking at me? Well, you are a knight, aren't you? Isn't this right up your alley? Well, I mean, it's... Well, it's kind of a road situation. I mean, what about our driver here? If there's going to be any decisions made... You've got to be kidding me. I... No, I was... I... No. Sorry. I, you lose. All right, I'll do it. Out of curiosity, is he always this reluctant to act and still a pushover? Oh, you have no idea. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, my backup team. All right, so what's the deal here? Are we splitting up or what? No, no splitting up. I want everyone staying together. I want to know exactly where everybody is so I'm not worried about them. In the event that we do have to split up, though, gravitate towards a partner here. We'll have some kind of buddy system. All right, I choose Malcolm then. Oh, really? I'm flattered, my dear. Really? Are you sure about that, <laughs> Of course. I mean, he's the only other passenger on the bus with us on our trip for the moment. I'd like to get to know him better. That's not out of the ordinary, is it? No. 
No, absolutely not. I look forward to our conversations, my dear. And so do I. Well, I suppose that leaves you and me, huh? Yep. Damn, I was hoping to spend my time with the pretty girl. Sorry. One thing before we get going, though, you know, you've been driving us around forever, and you've never actually told us what your name is. That's because I've never actually offered that information to you, have I? Any particular reason why? I'm not prying too much, I hope. (sighs) I've driven a bus for over 40 years now. Most people who get on, get off, and I never see them again. I don't like goodbyes. I find it very sad, so I try not to get on any sort of a first-name basis with anybody. Oh, I see. Nothing personal, you understand, but that's the life of a bus driver. You're not driving a bus right now. (laughs) Point taken, young lady. Point taken, yes. My name is Turvy. Turvy it is. Looks like it's you and me. Yay. Still rather be with a pretty girl. Thank you. All right, that's two teams of two, so I guess we'll go from here. Do we have room for more? What do you mean? Look out there in the parking lot. There's headlights coming this way. More refugees from the fog. Someone should probably go out there and warn them about what's happened here. Even if we don't know exactly what that is. Uh, Yeah, all right. Uh, I'll go out there and warn them. You guys, I don't know, pick up some supplies or something here. You know, stuff we might, I don't know, need while we're over there. I'll 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 be back in a bit. I'll bring extra food. Duh. So is he a born leader or a leader in training? Training. But more at the community college level, I think. I find your choice of me as a partner very interesting. I find you very interesting. You strike me as some sort of, I don't know, puzzle I need to sort out, that's all. I hope you find me challenging. Well, it would hardly be fun otherwise, would it? Hanover? That was quick. (laughs) Grab everything and head for the Skyway. What? What's wrong? It's a semi and it's not stopping! Oh, God. Move! Move! Oh, God. Listening to The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, Rest Stop, Part 2. Written and performed by Kyan Chris Conroy, and available as part of the Technical Difficulties Podcast at techdiff.com. Technical Difficulties is registered under Creative Commons 2.0 license. Go to techdiff.com for more information. If you'd like to contact the author, you can do so by sending a Gmail to techdiff at gmail.com or go over to techdiff.com to leave a message for the particular episode. Or go over to techdiff.freeforums.org to join in discussions. For more information, go to thewakingworld.net and cayennechrisconroy.com. Thank you for listening to Wednesday Wonders right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic live and theatrical audio plays, Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama, Thursday Thrillers for action, adventure, mystery, and crime drama, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases for the week from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.